Hi, I am Jo from Jo's Paradise of Colour. In today's video, this is what you're going to be making. Um, teaching you how to apply the locks to a thick and thin. Uh, it is so beautiful. This is fresh off the wheel, so I still need to steam this. And once it's complete, all those puffs will puff up more and it will set the twist. In the tutorial, I am using a chicken embroidery art silk. But it's too thin a thread and it does snap. So you may want to swap it out for something else. I ended up going with a mulberry silk instead. You can use whatever you like. Um, I use up to a four ply. You could use a cotton, but if you're going to knit or crochet with your end piece, you don't want to use a cotton because it doesn't have the elasti that you need. If you're going to knit with it, you want to use a wool or a silk. It's got the elastic, it's thick, um, it's, it's tough. Um, go for a four ply or a la lace weight in your merino. Uh, my silk is a lace weight. Just choose something that has a bit of elastic, is, is tough to break um, and is thin. Now in the kit, you will receive a hand-painted 18.5 micron merino top in Outback. You also receive 25 grams of luscious, beautiful, soft um, Angora kid mohair locks. Now I have already prepped this um, however I will show you how to prep it using the raw washed angora fleece that you will receive in the pack. Um, you will also receive a spool of um, chicken embroidery silk in a beautiful mulberry color to match. So I will show you how to prep the merino to the size that you need for this tutorial. I'll also show you in the first part how to prep your Angora Kid Mohair Locks so it's nice and fluffy um, and goes further um, and I will also show you the plying technique as well so for this tutorial I am going to teach you how to make a double ply slub that's a thick and thin with the kid mohair locks. So in this tutorial, I will be using my electric spinning wheel. So in your kits, you will receive 25 grams of the kid mohair locks. This is what I've prepped so far. It looks like a lot, doesn't it? It is nice and fluffy and expands once you pull it apart gently. But you'll be surprised on how much this actually weighs. Five grams. So you're going to have quite a lot to play with. In your pack, it might not seem that much, 
but once you start fluffing it up and separating those locks you're going to find that you're going to have a lot to play with and you'll probably have enough for another one if you choose to use it for another roving piece yarn piece if you decide that or you can choose to have lots and lots of beautiful locks throughout your piece that is up to you everyone spins differently and everyone will have a different finished product so hopefully um, I am um, shown the finished products um, so yes to start you want to get yourself a scrap bag this will contain all the stuff you do not want to keep this is all the knots all the extra hair, the VM, um, the not so nice or defined sections and also the ends. So you want to get yourself some little scissors as well. All those leftovers will go into that. You also want to either have a pile on your desk or you can get another bag to put all your good stuff in it. So this is the pile I'm working on. As you can see in your piles you'll have sections that look like this. They are a bit condensed and that is fine. What you want to do is pick out a piece, separate that from that, and find the more defined curls. And once you start gently opening them up, you will be able to see what you can keep what you will discard i i prefer to chop off the ends because that's where the wax and the lanolin is so you chop that off like that and you discard that now you can with your fingernails tease them apart however you don't want to take off too much and you want to try keep that that curl that crimp as much as possible like so and you keep doing that until you run out and you grab another bundle and you continue see how that's a bit furry on the end tease that out like so and discard it this is up to you if you want to make it very fine like this or you want to try keep as much of the curl as possible and make it thicker It will give a different effect to your finished piece. You can make it look more arty or you can make it look more soft. And you continue. This will take me a week so don't be um, put off the preparation once when you're creating 
something that is a luxury art yarn because when you are making luxury art yarns it is a different type of art yarn it is going to take much longer to prepare everything that you need for it it is also a more delicate work than as you would make a normal um, double ply slub you would try and make the fat bits as fat as possible and try keep it as textured as possible but because this is going to be a luxury art yarn I'm looking at making this enough meters for someone to be able to make something decent out of it so it will probably be um, a probably a bulky yarn instead of the chunky or super jumbo so it will be more um, more defiant the thin bits will be roughly about an 8 to 10 ply leaning more towards the 8 ply so yes so these when you're um, adding your locks to wh whichever part is the um, the single that you choose this doesn't make it too thick on the thin bits all right I will start back up as soon as I've finished prepping the rest of these locks so yes you want to try get something similar to that if you find that yours is not looking like this just separate them a little bit more hi and welcome back this is part two um, to this video you should see <laughs> you should have quite a fluffy mound of curls in front of you by now um, this amount took me a week to separate um, but look at the difference it is absolutely stunning now with this yarn I may only use about that much um, I prepped extra for the next spin um, which will be a core spun locky yarn um, so I'm going to keep this much which is so I might keep a little bit extra I might add quite a lot to it actually maybe 10 grams which is about that much you can choose to add all of your locks if you want um, but I think that is plenty for this type of yarn uh, so in this amount it is about 25 grams and you would not expect this much locks to be 25 grams but it's because it's so light and so fluffy and 25 grams goes a very long way so when you're purchasing locks you only really need to purchase a little amount you don't have to buy 100 grams of locks for a project so I'm going to probably 
just take it out of the bag as I need it or I'll put it into a bucket so it's easy access all right so that's the locks you should all be ready by now for the second part which is separating your 18.5 micron merino or whatever um, fiber top you've decided to use so mine is braided so I just unbraid it and then I will strip it into four sections but you just fluff it up like so and then you separate your pieces by about that much should have four strips okay now that you have split it into four you should have about that thickness now with braided it can get a bit condensed uh, over a little time um, if not used straight away and when packaged the same thing can happen so you might see a little bit of fraying maybe some knots here and there you just pick it off gently just little bits not the entire lot otherwise you're not going to have anything to play with so see that bit of a knot just pull that off discard it some more because when you're making the thick and thin you want it to be nice and smooth but if you've got these big chunky bits of fray sticking out it can make it look a little bit messy so I just go along each strand and remove the felted knots and till it's all done it should be able to be drafted quite easy I have stripped it up already um, this is this one's a bit thin uh, however for the thin sections you can do um, beehives and or you can have thinner fat bits or you can always um, put the two ends together and get a multiple colored um, section so like so and when you spin that it's going to twist around each other make a spiral effect and you're going to have pretty cool um, looking slubs so I like to do that every second um, section however I've not done that with this one and I will do one just to show you um, so you just draft that so they will form together pretty nicely I also set up my wheel so it only spins when I've got my foot on the pedal which is a lot easier to control so I just put those to those ends together with the end piece and then spun it together To make a slub you hold the top you hold the bottom about 10 centimeters away and then pull towards you and where it's thin you pinch that and you run the other hand down other hand down to the pinch bit and you form a slub so i am doing semi-long 
thin sections on this one. And I am adding the locks. So when adding the locks, you want to put a lock underneath and pinch it down, press it down with your finger so it stays there. Start spinning and get it to wrap around. Wrap around that bite, that yarn. Like so. That will be part of a slub. Now you can add it anywhere and how much of that you please. Um, you can, this is pretty short locks. You can have them um, sticking out if you wish. Or you can blend them in if you wish. But I like to have them a bit uneven, uneven and a bit sticking out. I think it gives a really nice effect once it's complete. And it keeps it nice and soft and, and textured. Like so, have that un underneath, un underneath the single, and put push your finger down. You can make that as thick or as many as you like or as thin. And then once your wheel is spinning, you let that catch onto the single and you continue you're basically core spinning the locks onto your spun single This is the last part. Um, this is all balled up using my hand um, after I finished it. So if you are using a super jumbo e-spinner or an electric wheel and you do not have a spare bobbin, you need to ball it up on your hand and then get your silk out once that's done and tie it to the end of your yarn. You can twist the bottom to help it twist on your silk if it's not doing it by itself. Just twist it 